Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to mourn the loss of clickbait news. Mm. It did so much for us. It really did. It was an important part of gaming, internet, YouTube. Bethesda may have moved on to greener pastures, but will always have the memories. You've played Alexa Skyrim, and get Skyrim. Skyrim on the fridge and felt the cold winters. I'm not changing it over my dead body. Prepare to experience something worse than fallout. You're fulfilling your destiny. Become my apprentice. Secretly, you're not a douche. What? Did we just become best friends? Yep. <laughs> oh, that's hot. That's hot. I shall call him... me. I'm standing by you because That Does Nothing is about to be the single biggest failure in the history of personal computing. Tell me something else I don't know. Just when we thought we were out, they pull, pull us, us back, back in. Ladies and gentlemen, so Bethesda. They made us do a news video. Yeah, we're back okay, now. We just can't yeah. resist. This was uh, this is too good not to touch. Okay, <laughs> when I saw the news, I was like, "Holy crap, <laughs> this is incredible!" Uh, this is what this is what we used to do, baby. Okay, clickbait is all it's it's all about that. This now. is one of the biggest days in the history of gaming news, and damned if we'll be missing out on it. Uh, if you have it's a good day for Yong too. It's a good day. Shares in Yong Ye dive 35% on the news that Bethesda is being sold by Microsoft. Sell, sell, sell. Sell, that's it right now. Okay, so listen, there's a lot to talk about. We're going to get through it all. Let's cover the basics. Let's cover the facts first so you know exactly what's going on. Last night at around 11 o'clock, while I was trying to go to sleep, mm. I get notifications on my phone. The first tweet I saw was from Jason Schreier, who says that Zenimax is being sold to Microsoft for $7.5 billion. And that was still like semi-rumor, right? Because Jason Schreier, he breaks news, he's got a really good track record, uh, but I we didn't... hadn't heard anything, of course, from officially from Correct. Xbox. But he wasn't saying it's a rumor, he was saying this is happening, yes. right? So I think the word was out at that point, and he was just among the first to start getting the word out on mm. Twitter. I was like, holy shit! There goes my sleep for tonight. Yeah. And then, you know, obviously just following the news that happened after that, Absolute insanity. Okay, what are the details? Now, just to be super clear, Microsoft is acquiring ZeniMax, not just Bethesda or whatever. When we think Bethesda, we think Fallout 76, the greatest Bethesda game of all time. Doom, the worst Bethesda game of all time. Correct, terrible, right? But it's important to understand that Bethesda is actually owned by ZeniMax. Yeah. ZeniMax is only a shell that houses the game studios and their IP. It's, it's an umbrella company that may have had other things in the past, but really it's just predominantly a hell of a lot of game studios. Sure. Now, this is a hell of a lot of a price to pay for it too. And this is the second biggest gaming acquisition that we've ever seen. The first one was Supercell. Uh, it was like a mobile company that was acquired by Tencent for $8 billion. This, $7.5 billion freedom dollars, okay? $7.5 billion for Bethesda and all their IP that comes along with it. I and there's a I, lot. Didn't Disney pay like $4 billion for Star Wars? Uh, I think that was the price on that. I don't know, but that's nothing. It seems like it's nothing compared to this. Yeah, this is absolutely gigantic. It is easily the largest core gaming acquisition in history. Underneath ZeniMax sits a lot of stuff, right? So it's not just Bethesda Game Studios, it's also Arcane. Now, Arcane are the guys that make Dishonored and Prey and the upcoming Deathloop. Uh, we're talking a little known studio by the name of id. <laughs> They're the guys that make that uh, shooty game with yes. the Master Chief Ripper. The demon looking things. Okay, exactly right. Just, Nothing, nothing major. Mm -hmm. uh, there's Machine Games. They're the guys that make Wolfenstein. Not bad. There's Zenimax Online, who are doing Elder Scrolls Online. Yep. And then there's also Alpha Dog and Tango and a bunch of others as well, right? So you're talking about some seriously big studios here with some yep. seriously big IP under their belt. I think that the IP is probably some of the most uh, valuable IP that we are seeing in the gaming industry. I know a lot of it has been hit in the last year or two. I understand that. But if you really think about it, we're seeing some heavy hitters here. We're looking at Dishonored, Man, Doom, Elder Scrolls series, Fallout, Rage, Starfield when it does come out, God knows when it is coming out, uh, Wolfenstein, Quake, like, you know, there's so much here. If, if you took this on by yourself and had a console, I mean, you got, a lot, you got enough there for exclusives. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty much, like, in terms of the quality of this, 
Sony's uh, PlayStation exclusives, I think they range around that that amount, like at ten or twelve different exclusives. Yeah, Do you know I, what I mean? think like, that Microsoft just bought themselves the equivalent of what PlayStation have in terms of the number of really large scale IPs that they can leverage. Yep. Uh, they just bought it overnight, right? And I saw an interesting figure on Twitter from someone that said that Sony's operating profit for like six years or something was a few billion dollars, right? Wow, okay. And Microsoft just bought Bethesda for seven billion, right? Mm. There's a completely different scale that operates when you're talking about Microsoft versus Sony. You know, Microsoft can just reach into its pocket and be like, yeah, oh, I've got yeah, spare yeah. seven billions lying around versus Sony, they need to save up for like eight years yeah. to be able to afford like one Bethesda. You know what <laughs> exactly, I mean? Exactly, exactly. Right. Completely but different. What I'm excited for, right? is the possibility of what kind of crossovers, what kind of games are we going to see now in the Xbox studios and maybe they're going to work together, baby. I want to see a Doom vs. Master Chief, okay? Or a <laughs> like, Smash like, Brothers. Like Alien vs. Predator. Oh yeah, I actually thought about Smash Brothers. You could definitely do a Microsoft Smash yep. now with their existing characters plus Bethesda's characters. I'd play that game. I would definitely play racer. that game. A Mario Kart, Xbox Kart, it'd be so good. I'm really excited for the possibility of certain games being unreleased. Say, for example, Fallout 76. Microsoft, <laughs> do us a solid here and just yeet it out of existence. You've got the do cash. everyone a favor, okay? But like also, on top of that, there is also some exclusives coming to PS5 still with Bethesda. Yeah. That's a bit weird. It's super weird. There's two of them actually in total. Yeah, so there's, uh, just so to be clear about this, Bethesda signed exclusive agreements with PS5 for Ghostwire Tokyo and for Deathloop, okay? That was already announced, that was agreed, mm. it was happening. Now this acquisition takes place, people ask Microsoft, what's the deal? They are still going to honor the PS5 exclusive agreements. So you have a situation where Microsoft will be releasing PS5 exclusives for at least like I don't a think year we've ever, I think we I don't I never, That's never happened. we would see that. That's insanity. But it really That's crazy. It is crazy. It does say to me though that uh you know, this was still in the works for some time. This wasn't a sure thing. Sure. They were already planning exclusives for PS5 at least a few months ago. Yep, you know what I'm yep, saying? Yep, yep. A lot of these deals are brokered, you know, a few months before, of course, they're announced. I'm guessing this Bethesda deal's been in the works for probably a few months at least. Yeah. But again, it wasn't a, a sure thing. And now they've, you know, there's a few things that are going to not be in the ecosystem of Xbox in yeah. terms of new releases. Well, I, I have long suspected that Zenimax would want to sell. I really have always thought that ZeniMax has massive cash flow problems, okay? If you look at their revenue base, they're not making a huge amount of money compared to other publishers, mm. especially given the IP they're working with. If you look at the way they've been trying to monetize their games over the last little while, they have been desperate to find ways to charge us more for their games. For example, paid mods in um, Elder Scrolls games and Fallout. Uh, obviously Fallout 76, which was just a massive, massive cash grab. Fallout first. Culminating in Fallout first. Mm. A subscription model to what is objectively a garbage game. Like, I'm yep. sorry, I won't hear otherwise, you know? This always looked to me like a company that was desperate for cash, given how expensive it was to make their games. Like, how long has Starfield been in development? Mm. And we know nothing about it. We haven't even seen nothing. any gameplay. We've seen a logo. Elder Scrolls 6 as well. How long has it been since Skyrim was released, right? These games cost a lot to make and they haven't found a way to charge their audience money, microtransaction money. So I always thought that Zenimax would be looking to buy a buyer because their business just wasn't like sustainable. Not to mention they're in like a, you know, an, a gaming engine crisis. They're all, they're building that from the ground up too. So in, in a lot of ways, I feel like it, they're ripe for change. Sure. Now, the question is, why would Microsoft buy this? Uh, they've been obviously uh, shopping hard for the last two years for a lot of studios, especially 2018, 2019. We saw a lot of acquisitions. There's a lot there now, you know, Obsidian, Ninja Theory, Playground, Turn 10, Compulsion Games, Double Fine, and in Exile. Not to mention, there was rumors about EA, man. Like, that was going around for some time. It makes sense for Xbox to try and get as many companies as possible because it's going to be an IP war when we get out of this whole console thing in five to 10 years. You know, they needed to go back to the drawing board and go, how are we gonna win the, no the next console generation and get people on the Game Pass and get everyone into a cloud you know, subscription service that makes sense, sure. get all these game studios. Bethesda is the biggest win I've ever seen them have and the biggest win probably in gaming history. Yeah. Like legit. Obviously the head honchos had their say about how all this went down. Phil Spencer said, Xbox and Bethesda have worked together for years. We share similar passions and belief. Proud to welcome them to Team Xbox. Excited how we'll advance gaming together for players everywhere. Todd Howard also put out a statement. He had this to say. I'm rich. Todd Howard probably owns a lot of stock in Zenimax. Yes. 
and he would have got a handsome payday out of this. So good on you, Tom. He also did have actual words to say as well. He said, like our original partnership, this one is about more than one system on one screen. We share a deep belief in the fundamental power of games, in their ability to connect, empower, and bring joy, and a belief we should bring that to everyone, regardless of who you are, where you live, or what you play on, regardless of the screen size, the controller, or your ability to even use one. Okay. That was language that was sort of echoed a little bit by Pete Hines, who's the head of PR for uh, Bethesda. And uh, he's a big fan of us, by the way. Loves he us. He really loves us. Loves us. He says in his statement, the key point is we're still Bethesda. We're still working on the same games we were yesterday, made by the same studios we've worked with for years, and those games will be published by us. Now, what we can surmise from this statement is that Microsoft is buying all of Bethesda, mm. and Bethesda will continue to operate as it normally would. Like, it's a subsidiary of Microsoft. Mm. It's not like its studios are going to be vacuumed up into that kind of, like, Xbox Game Studios thing where they get published through them and whatever else. It seems as though Bethesda is still going to handle the publishing of their games. Mm. Now, whether or not that's the truth, the case in the future, I don't know, because it's kind of weird for Microsoft to have two independent publishing capabilities. That doesn't make sense to me. Look, if they've already got a well-oiled, established machine that is publishing Correct. games why would then why would xbox then jump on and have to make it harder for them to include bethesda into their own publishing warehouse it's not it doesn't make any sense as a former management consultant i can tell you uh, that's right for being cut. There's no question. Oh, you about think that. so? Okay. Oh, no question. Well, no question. I don't know how much money, extra money, that's going to be for them to publish. I don't know if it's really going to be uh, strategic challenges and all that kind of stuff. That might be there. Uh, but I also think we're also going to. I think uh, Bethesda is going to retain its independence, a lone star in terms of it's still going to have QuakeCon, it's still going to have sure. all this stuff. Sure, sure, it's sure. still going to be its own beast that everyone still goes and enjoys. You know, QuakeCon 2021. I'm sure they're going to do those things too. I think it's important. Or it's, it's quickly yeah because a lot of people a lot of hardcore gamers that have been playing quake playing doom for 20 odd years they want to feel like not too much is changing in in terms of what, what they love about well, quake uh, yeah quake doom quake Con, i sorry. think though to be fair there's a reason everyone's kind of celebrating this news and that's like bethesda has been pretty garbage do you know what i mean oh no so two ways about it i feel it. like you say they don't want too much to change i feel like people do want a lot of change i'm out talking of about quake on and the events i mean oh, sure, sure, i'm sure, talking sure. about the events yeah. yeah yeah you know i agree but i think broadly speaking though a lot of people are really welcoming this news because bethesda track record over the last few years has been shit obviously they have been trying to make as much money as possible to keep themselves afloat uh and that has resulted in some really bad choices and some and just really degrading their brand mm. massively to think that microsoft gives them a big sort of pillow of money to sustain them and to help them like hopefully not have to make such shitty choices gives you a lot of hope in the future of these ips and that they and that elder scroll 6 won't be crammed with mm. microtransactions and garbage that microsoft would be like you know what make a good game we're going to put it on game pass that's that that's the dream we don't know if it's true or not but we hope yeah i think uh bethesda desperately need a philosophical change like big time you know and they also needed not so much financial stress maybe we'll just see that naturally occur now within uh, that actual workplace and, the, and their own decision making when they don't feel like they are desperate to make ends meet you know sure. uh, you're right in saying that you know it is a hardcore fan base hardcore fan base don't want to pay microtransaction bullshit uh, it means that a lot of games that are at the highest you know caliber like doom aren't monetized as same as FIFA where like a lot yeah. of the stuff is just like ported over and you're still seeing you know 2019 <laughs> yeah, on FIFA yeah. 2020 now the 7.5 billion dollar question is Will Bethesda's library become exclusive mm. to Xbox? Uh, I have been really surprised by the number of people that don't think this will happen. They're like, oh, no, 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 no. Microsoft would never do that. I think it's unfair. They're like, they were like, they'd be like, no, no, no. It's too much money to, to, to not release it on PlayStation. As though like PlayStation goes, oh, we have to release God of War on, yeah. on the Xbox and PC. Too important. There's too much money to be... Yeah. That's not how these things work, okay? Phil Spencer actually came out with a comment today saying, yes, Ghostwire Tokyo and Deathloop will honor the PS5 agreement. It's going to be exclusive, timed exclusive. He says, beyond these, the rest of Bethesda's upcoming games, such as the next Elder Scrolls and Starfield and everything else, will launch on Xbox, PC, and other consoles on a case-by-case -case mm. basis, right? So Phil Spencer is specifically saying, yeah, man, some of it's going to be exclusive. 
Some of it won't. It'll be case by case. I'd, ra I'd rather him set that precedent, you know. Sure. I think there's a lot of pressure right now for Phil to be like, oh, I'm good guy, Phil. Eh, nah, don't worry about it, guys. It's going to go... They just spent $7.5 billion. Crazy. It's okay for them to want to, uh, you know, capitalise on that purchase. They've bought the IP for a reason. Because yep. they want to make sure Xbox competes this. So this, this entire generation. That was the biggest problem last one. There was no reason to buy an Xbox. Now there is a reason. If the next Doom comes out in three years, it's in the kind of in the middle of the cycle uh, or maybe even two years who knows right uh, if that is exclusive the amount of uh, hardware that they will sell off the back of that doom is a system seller in itself they're not going to spend 7.5 billion to give it also to playstation and totally i can understand agree. that and people might think oh that's unfair or whatever the ecosystem of consoles compared to pcs it's a different ball game and you know xbox needs to justify this person's it, it, purchase there's you know if you don't have a good competition within console manufacturers you get laziness you get you know the situation with like ps2 where they just became arrogant and lazy and they released a stupid overpriced crappy mm. machine that just like was ridiculous mm. you know what i mean and then that meant xbox had an opportunity to swoop in and like completely crush them with 360 right mm. you want good tension between these two manufacturers otherwise one of them gets complacent and the way you get that tension is through exclusives that's it you know what i mean and like that's the ball game in general competition in general right so if microsoft want to make some of their games exclusive then that's on them and that's okay because as I said, I think it'll drive more competition between this in this industry. Mm -hmm. At the same time, I'm kind of of a view that we're likely to see more timed exclusives than we will full exclusives. I think Microsoft are positioning themselves in the sort of like software ecosystem place rather than the hardware base. Mm. I don't really think they care if you own an Xbox or not, but they definitely want you bought into the Xbox ecosystem. That's what matters to them. So I think you're likely to see these Bethesda games released on Xbox first and then later on released on PlayStation. That's my vibe. But even then, some of them, I think, just won't come to PlayStation at all. I think a lot of them will uh, go to PlayStation, but they'll be maybe the bottom of the barrel stuff. It'll be stuff that isn't going to be system sellers. It's not going to be things that people will For just have to jump onto Xbox first. Like Fallout 77. Like Fallout 77. That's right. A lot of people will jump Rage on Rage 3. You know. For, uh, Wolfenstein Youngblood 2. Yep. Or that will definitely make its way to PlayStation. But our sure. that, that, ca that cancelled Commander Keen game. They're we bringing that, that back. We need and that. And they're going to make that a PlayStation 5 exclusive. I mean, you know what I mean? they but did show it at the the, uh, with the the Quake showcase. I want to see more of it, everybody. Correct. But look, I mean, our point of view hasn't really changed in terms of if you put money in, if you are actually putting a vested financial stake into a game, then you should deserve some exclusivity here. Sure. And we've said that with other games before. This one is like the biggest financial stake you know, that Xbox is putting into Bethesda. Definitely. I do believe that they, they deserve some exclusivity there. But uh, speaking of exclusivity, <laughs> I'm doing it the uh the lame and live stuff now game pass baby yeah. game pass is going to be double the offering now like i, I there's a lot it's of good double, games on there but it's it's like it just gets a huge shot in that's the what out. i mean like there's so much value with bethesda uh with previous games with new games with games that are going to come out in the future game pass is already good and we've all, also seen ea jump on board with like 60 titles now we're seeing bethesda games I can't think of a better offering for $15 a month. I mean, I can't. imagine being able to play Elder Scrolls 6 on day one for like 10 bucks through to Game try Pass. it, really. I mean, that's just madness. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, I know a lot of people want to buy their games. Cool, you can still buy it, don't get me wrong. I'm just saying, if you want to get it for like 10 bucks on Game Pass, you can do that. The, and I mean, don't forget as well, Skyrim on Series X. I mean, that's the port we need. I mean, all these other ports have been warm-ups until the final release of the ultimate yep. edition of Skyrim on Series X with no bug fixes or changes, just, <laughs> just ported straight to the new console. <laughs> that will also be available on Game Pass. I'm I mean, excited that's, that. that's a deal breaker right there. But like, uh, I really feel like Xbox has done a fantastic job sure. of setting themselves up for this generation. Unbelievable. Uh, Unbelievable. I would have before thought, oh, we're going to see another whole round of just, oh, poor Xbox this whole generation for like sure. we did last time. Uh, I don't think they could have played their cards any better. Like, like legit. I mean, you've got you've literally got a machine that is like the, the most powerful console. Which means uh, it means nothing. I'm not going to get into that argument. It's stupid. Power doesn't matter. The Switch is the current is currently the highest selling console, like in the world right now. Power doesn't matter. Okay. Mm -hmm. But you've got a very powerful console that's going to be able to play the games well, right? Then you've got Xbox Series S which provides a really cost-efficient entry point for people who want to enter the Xbox ecosystem. You've got Xbox Game Pass, unquestionably the greatest deal in video games with Xbox first-party stuff coming on day one for like 10 bucks with a huge back catalog with EA games that have just joined as well yep. and Bethesda games now in there as well. You've got Project X Cloud, allowing- Payment you to plans too. 
Yeah, you can buy your console for like 30 bucks a month instead of buying it outright through Xbox All Access. Yep. And you've got Project X Cloud, which means you can play your games anywhere you like if you've got an internet connection. I mean, this is a beautiful start. Mm. Like, you know, we I, I love both consoles equally, but I will tell you that Xbox are crushing it at the moment mm. when it comes to setting themselves up for this next generation. They're just nailing it. Like, just absolutely nailing it. I feel like... Backwards compatibility is another thing. Yep. Full backwards compatibility. Sony, like, oh, yeah, we don't mind. One, don't two, and three. We don't really care about that. Nah. This is not really a focus. It's yeah. like, oh, okay. I, I think the I think the crux of this is like the whole discussion of uh, Xbox having no exclusivity or uh, Xbox really being behind the eight ball. I think it's kind of over now. I feel yeah. like this next generation, which is about to start on you know the 10th of November or the 12th of November, they are ve in a very good position to start competing with those exclusive that I feel I thought was untouchable. Like I felt yeah, like totally. PlayStation's IP was quite untouchable because yeah. it takes a long time to build up new P IP or to capitalize on current IP. And Xbox didn't do that, but with this next gen, we've got a lot of stuff to look forward to now. We had always joked that the Xbox Series X was the world's most optional console. Yes. It feels a lot less optional now. Still optional, and but... In fact, it actually just went on sale today, and I know in Australia at least, uh, pre like the, the units sold out within the first 20 minutes. Mm. So the but one in, people, for EB, EB Games. I mean, but EB Games is the largest retailer, so if they sold out in 20 minutes, then everybody else did as well. Mm. Anyone, there were lots of jokes going around that you'd just be able to walk into a store on day one of yeah. Xbox and buy one. I don't think so, man. And I think that, you know, this news coupled with everything else has positioned Xbox really well. Uh, that's it, man. What a story. Unbelievable. Bethesda. Good work, guys. Maybe the, the layman will get off the Bethesda blacklist. Maybe. That is the dream. I mean, Bethesda, if you're out there watching this video, which you probably are, we're ready to come back into the fold, baby. We will give you a hug if you give we, us a hug. We'll just embrace each other. Let us hug the Doom guy and he can... Quake 2021. Yeah. QuakeCon will be there. Rip and tear, baby. Rip and tear.